Okay, gang, so let's start wrapping up this uh, unit on, on plants. Let's start going over some of the anatomy. Not too many slides left to go for the lecture, though there are a bunch of slides after this that we're going to need to look through, familiarize yourself with, that have to do a lot with the anatomy, uh, but in, in, in a very specific way. So this is uh, the general anatomy of a flower. Um, most plants are what we call, um, well, plants have, have, have two different ways of housing their genitals, essentially. It's what we're thinking of, but this is how they do it. Um, uh, they're either what we call monoecious or they're called dioecious. Mono meaning one, di meaning two. Ecious refers to house. So monoecious means one house. So both genders would live in one house. In other words, they're hermaphrodites. They have male and female parts on the same plant. Then you'd have dioecious. Dioecious would be where you have two separate houses, one gender in each house. So that would be something like a male plant or versus a female plant. And then a lot of the plants that we have around here are um, hermaphrodites. They are monoecious, most plants that we have. And this is an example of a monoecious uh, a dicot flower. Um, so there are two main parts. There's the male part, which is the stamen, and the female part, which is the carpal. Now, a lot of people miss this on the exam. Please don't, because the male part has the word men in it. So stamen means it's the male part. And it's composed of the anther, which kind of looks like testicles, and the filament, which holds the testicles up and away from the, uh, the rest of the flower, so it's easier for birds and bees and other insects and pollinators to get close to them. And that's the anther and the filament. Now, the carpal is made of the stigma, the style, and the ovary. Um, the stigma is kind of like a, a pad where the pollen that's uh, being transferred uh, to it can stick to. The style is just a big uh, holder that holds the stigma up and away, so that way pollen can actually get to it, can actually get to the stigma. And the ovary actually houses the ovum, which is the egg. So females have ovaries. Right? Female humans have ovaries, and what's inside of there? The eggs. Another word for egg is ovule, right? So don't let that throw you off. The stigma's down the ovary, and then the inside there are eggs, also called ovules. A few other things on this plant, you have the petals, obvious, right? You have the sepal, and you have the receptacle. Um, the sepals, think of a rose that hasn't bloomed yet, okay? So it's got that green covering over the top of it, and you can kind of see the red petals underneath, but you, they, they have the predictive protective coating. Once the flower opens, where does that green coating go? Well, that's the sepal. It's just the little parts that hang down underneath. The remnants of the coating that was once over it to uh, covering over it to protect the petals. The receptacles where the flower actually attaches to the stem. Usually when flowers start to uh, uh, drain away, uh, lose water and dehydrate, and their, their vascular pressure goes down. Um, uh, the receptacle usually wilts, and it causes the flower to tilt a little bit. And you give it some water, and it goes back up, right? That's the receptacle, essentially, that, where it attaches to the stem. So there's not a whole lot going on with the anatomy of a flower, but this is a pretty important one, so please make sure that you, uh, you know, I'll tell you right now, this is the test question. So definitely know this one, all right? Um, again, this is a monoecious, um, meaning it has, it's hermaphrodite, it has both genders in the same plant. Um, which works out very, very well when you're a plant because as long as a pollinator comes by, you know you're going to have a good chance of picking up pollen and you're going to have a good chance of delivering pollen. So evolutionary speaking, that's a great advantage. It's a, it's a great system to have. Um, there's only a, off the top of my head, I can only think of one plant that is, uh, and I'm not a plant person by any means, but I can think of just one good example of a plant that is uh, dioecious, and that's the ginkgo tree, ginkgo bilobia. We often think to take uh, ginkgo bilobia as a mental stimulant, um, even though there's no research to you know suggest that that actually works, because FDA does not put their stamp of approval on it, so that means that it doesn't do what it claims to do, so just, you know, FYI. Uh, the ginkgo bilobia, it actually has a separate male and female flower uh, plants, and people only plant the male ones, because the female uh, plants produce a cone, because it is a type of gymnosperm, um, that is kind of fleshy, and it starts to rot as soon as it's produced and it reeks. It smells like rotting flesh. That's because ginkgos are an ancient lineage. Uh, when they were evolving, there were no bees and butterflies and birds, but there were tons of beetles and flies, and beetles and flies are generally attracted to rotting meat, so they smell like rotting meat, and it works. But just don't plant the female, because as soon as she produces fruit, it's going to start stinking up the place. You don't want to do that. Uh, San Francisco has a huge garden 
a botanical garden and they um, planted females and then quickly removed them and planted all males once they realized that the fruit stank. So um, the next couple of slides kind of go on to some just uh, pretty descriptive terms, but it starts breaking down to pretty, you know, there's a lot. There's just a lot coming up, but it's good to familiarize yourself with. But this is kind of the anatomy of leaves and angiosperms. Um, so here is a typical leaf, kind of just a, a, a typical leaf. Here is the same leaf again, but just as a, labeled as a simple leaf versus compound. So you have the tip, the base, you have the margins, you have the, uh, the midrib, the secondary, which is the main vein. You have the secondary veins, and then you have the lemina, uh, lemina which is the actual leaf in between. The uh, little piece that holds this to the stem is called the petiole. The same thing here, just shows a little bit difference. It actually gives you the, uh, the two sort of the lobes and the sinus. Uh, the, on, the, on the margins of, the, of this leaf, here's the petiole. I just says aisle, but it's because the picture for this covered up the, the pet part. So this is the petiole. But that's, these are both simple leaves. This is a compound leaf. This is not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaves. This is seven leaflets. This is one leaf. A compound leaf is one leaf made up of a bunch of different leaflets. So this is still the petiole. This is the rachis. And then here we have the actual uh, petioles. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, uh, uh, um, gymnosperm, um, um, gymnosperm sperm pollen in my nose, I guess. Made me sneeze. Nah. So we are at the compound leaf. Again, here's the petiole. The part that holds the leaflet is the petiole, like the smaller version of the petiole. And once we kind of get into here, this is no longer called the petiole, but it's called the rachis, and it's just what holds up the leaflets. The leaf at the tip is always called the terminal leaflet, and depending on if there's one or two, that kind of has a, you know, makes a difference on what type of compound leaf this could be. If there's only one, then it'd be an odd, uh, uh, oddly numbered uh, uh, compound leaf, versus if it had two, it'd be an even number compound leaf. So some just general leaf types, again, simple. Uh, here's compound. Here's a doubly compound. And this would be a, uh, a compound leaf because there's more than one. Uh, but it's called a palmate simply because uh, instead of the uh, rachis being one long piece with the leaves coming off of it, there's just one point and these come off like a, a branches of a palm tree. So Moving on to the margins, I'm not going to go through each of these, but on your exam, you're going to have questions where I show you the edges of some leaves and ask you to identify them. Um, I try to give you uh, options that are, um, one, obviously right, the rest should be kind of obviously wrong. I try not to make them too hard, like telling the difference between dentate and denticulate. Um, it can be a little bit more difficult than these drawings make it out to be. There's a reason why these are drawings and not actual examples of leaves. It's hard to find leaves that fit this to the, you know, that, that fit these descriptions perfectly because it's, it's nature. There's adaptations, there's variations. And, and, and sometimes you see areas of the leaf that look dentate and then all the areas of the same leaf that looks denticulate. And maybe you go to the, another leaf on the same tree, it looks serrate. I mean, it could be it just trees do crazy, weird things, right? First of all, alternation of generations where it's got, you know, uh, you know aliens busting out of people's stomachs. And then you got this where it's uh, you just, you know, some doubly serrate or serrate. I don't know. I'm going to die. Um, we don't, we, it just does weird things. But entire dentate, denticulate, spiny, serrate, double serrate, serrate. Ciliate, like little hairs, cilia. Lobates, big lobes, like earlobes. Undulates, where it kind of goes up and down evenly. Centrates, when you're five years old and you're drawing a cloud, that's kind of what that looks like. And sinulate starts off with sine, like a sine wave. So it's got, you know, a higher frequency than the undulate. So just more lobes. Uh, but that's, that's some basic leaf margins. The same with the leaf arrangements. Um, on your paper, it may look a little bit different than mine. Um, uh, just because I rearranged them in one of my uh, in in one of my editions of these notes, I rearranged them and then forgot to do it on the uh, major PowerPoint, but it was on the ones that I sent out to my students. Um, but just go through and look and see what are the different types, and why do you think they're called that? Like even pinnate, pinnate because the leaves are um, uh, are are just pinnate from each other essentially. Um, 
but they're even because there's two terminals versus odd pinnate. It's odd because there's one terminal. Alternate is the opposite of pinnate. Pinnate, they're right across from each other. And alternate, they alter. One here, one there. One here, one there. Uh, and so forth and so on. And, and down the branch, I mean, you can read. I'm not going to go over all of them for you. You can kind of see what they are. Uh, but just kind of be familiar with these. Same thing with the leaf tips. It can be really different, difficult to tell uh, retus from emarginated um, when you're looking at the actual leaf itself. Um, the same thing with uh, uh, mucronate and cuspidate. When you're actually looking at the leaf, they're, they're, they're going to be a blending of these two. Um, same with the acute and cuminate and obtuse and round. I mean, it, it could be almost difficult to tell at times. You just got to take your best guess. A lot of students say, hey, uh, we do a whole lab where they have to pick leaves and, and then identify them and, and, and um, they actually make drawings of the leaves. And then they have to go through and identify the tips, the bases, the margins. And students ask me, hey, what do you think this is? Is this obtuse or is this acute? I'm like, mm hmm, it's leaf. Because it could really be either. Uh, it's, it's really kind of up to you. Just take your best guess of what you think it is, and generally you'll be right. Same thing with the bases. You can see all the types up here. Uh, there's tons of them. Um, just be familiar with a few of them. And the last one we go over is the actual vein patterns that run through it. So if you look at the veins that run through the leaf, just do your best guess to go through and see what you think it is. Um, if you have parallel, know that you're probably dealing with a monocot. Everything else is a dicot. Dichotomous generally only occurs in ginkgo biloba leaves. Um, so those two are probably out unless you're dealing with you know, ginkgo trees or some type of grass or monocot. Everything else is something that we kind of see, and there's often blending. Sometimes this one leaf will have what looks like um, uh, cross venate and also some uh, reticulate going on. It just depends on your point of view. Um, but take your best guess when you see this on the exam, and, and, and guys, you'll, you'll do fine. I have every faith in you. Um, so that's The Wonderful World of Plants by uh, Professor Roth, and I hope I did it justice, at least for an introductory course, and I hope you learned something from this, and maybe you'll start looking at plants a little bit differently, and uh, you know, don't let the aliens bust out of your chest. Have a good day.